first important team? Well, the, the answer to the question is very easy. Uh, you have too many lawyers here in India, yeah? Um, <laughs> Uh, I wasn't actually joking, because I mean, you know, the other country that has a lot of disputes is, is Brazil. And again, too many lawyers. So m maybe the African countries are actually quite lucky having very few lawyers. But to be serious, I think the, you know, inevitably, in a very complex international environment with the national legislation, the treaty provisions, the transfer pricing provisions, all being very complex, inevitably you're going to get disputes. And sometimes having disputes is quite a helpful thing because that's the way you clarify the law. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, so we shouldn't all see disputes as necessarily being negative. If this is the way, in fact, you can clarify the regulations or the, or the, the, the legal text, then you know, resolving disputes uh, is, is quite a good way of, of doing that clarification. Yeah? The, the second comment is um, some of the data that's being put up there, this has been put together by Vienna, we looked at the um, uh, the IBFD data, we've looked at the OECD data, we've looked at data that's put out by Ernst and Young, and try to get a feel for where do disputes arise. And I think the important thing, Mr. Chair, is to recognize that about 80% of the disputes are in the area of transfer pricing. And of that 80%, about 80% are disputes about the facts. Very, very important. And that hasn't changed very much. The second important thing that I think for, for our discussion this morning um, is to recognize that um, when you're talking about disputes, before you even get to talking about how you resolve them, you need to ask why are they arising, yes? And in many countries, and this includes India, um, part of the reasons you get a lot of disputes is because of the way the internal structure within the revenue department, yeah? the incentives that are provided. I mean, if you tell your tax auditors you'll get more money if you make more disputes, then inevitably <coughs> you get more disputes. And there were some countries, in fact, where, uh, I shan't name them, Russia, uh, where, you know, the, you actually earned more if you generated more disputes, yeah? So the wrong incentives are there, yes? The second thing is that you'll get more disputes unless you get uh, a willingness on the part of the revenue authority to provide clarification. And that means that sometimes they have to stick their neck out and they have to be saying, well, w this is our interpretation of the legislation. Now, they can do that by rulings. They can do it in the context of APAs. Um, uh, and then the third reason that you may get disputes is that if the internal mechanisms within the tax administration are not suited to resolving issues before they become disputes. Um, and a last comment I would make is that, um, you know, inevitably, no matter what you do at the domestic level, you are going to get cross-border disputes. Trying to resolve those, I think you know, the first thing you need to do is look at how do you uh, engage in alternative dispute resolution mechanisms, particularly conciliation and mediation, yes? Because if you think about that figure I gave you, 80% you know, of the disputes are transfer pricing, 80% of those disputes are facts. You really don't need judges to tell you what the facts are, yeah? So the more you can use mediation and, and these alternative dispute mechanisms, the more you avoid getting into MAP. And the last comment then I think is on, on the MAP process itself. Um, I mean the figures you put up, it, you know, you can see the number of MAP cases has increased. I think it's going to shoot right off the chart because of better, out off the chart. But the thing to remember is that many non-OECD countries have never had one MAP, never one. In Asia, in Latin America, in Africa, the majority of countries have never had one map. Now, sometimes that's because they don't have a tax treaty, but in many cases, because they don't see Article 5 as being that important, yeah? And yet, Article, uh, Article 25, sorry, Article 25 is the key provision of a treaty, yeah? So, you know, it's a fact to keep in mind as we go through the discussion that, yes, you know, India, you are the champions of map. At one point, you had 284 map cases outstanding, yeah? Uh, yeah, more than almost all the OECD countries combined. Yeah? Huh? You've been resolving them, that's great, yeah? But the majority of countries, they're not like that, they don't have MAP, yeah? Um, and then the last point, and then I will shut up, is, you know, if you want the MAP to work effectively, it's quite helpful to have something behind it, yeah? And, and that's what we'll come to later on and having this, you know, mandatory dispute settlement. I'll stop that. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, Jeffrey, let me just now move on because you spoke a lot about why disputes are high in India uh, to our two senior uh, Indian representatives, one who's already served as a law officer, uh, Mr. Parasan, uh, from 2012 to 2014. He was a solicitor general, now a practicing advocate, and of course, Mr. Arvind Datta, who's actually seen how the trial goes on some of these disputes. Just wanted to expand the question for both Mr. Parasan and Mr. Datta. 
not just why tax disputes are high in certain countries, particularly India, but is Action Point 14 adequate enough to address the issue in India? Mr. Parasaran, first you. Yeah, actually, from the objectives of uh, Action Point 14 itself, it wants uh, disputes to be settled in a very fair manner. But uh, how far I think uh, India is going to adapt to this? Coming to your question, what is the reason for uh, more number of uh, disputes in India? As I was pointing out yesterday, that's been mainly due to the economic boom in the country. And secondly, apart from lots of multinationals coming in, there has been multiple foras, you know, for resolving tax disputes. Starting from the assessing officer, CIT appeals, income tax appellate tribunals, then high courts, supreme courts, you have other authorities, like the authority for advance rulings. And apart from that, even though the Supreme Court has laid down that uh, the principle of consistency are applicable to judgments in tax cases, the principle of res judicata is not applicable. And we must also blame the government because of frequent changes in policy and law. And uh, the Income Tax Act is one of the most confusing piece of legislation, containing lots of explanation. Apart from that, another reason is the approach of the revenue to file appeals in each and every matter, even in cases where as Solicitor General of India, where I, I had advised filing SLPs, they used to go to the Attorney General. If the Attorney General used to turn down the request of the revenue, they used to go to the Law Minister. That was the approach of the revenue. But I am not only blaming the revenue, even the assessees, they used to go to the courts challenging merely show cost notices. So that is the reason. But we will have to learn from, I think, Action Plan 14. And uh, that, I think, will go a long way in actually giving us a good lesson, not only to the revenue, but also to the assessees. And uh, I think uh, it speaks for itself. Yeah. Action Plan 14 speaks for itself. I need to explain beyond that. 